Sorry about that. Oops. After you answer it, I'm going next door for the language. Oh, yeah. I'm nice and toasty with my poncho. Um, so the question was, are students just kind of dropped into Handshake? How do they find those positions? That sort of thing. So we, we'll, we're going to go over that and see how students view Handshake. Um, but to briefly answer your question, there's a little job section that they're able to click on, and then they can filter jobs for on-campus student employment or other employment that they are looking for through there. So there's, it's right, it's pretty intuitive for the student view. Um, they're able to just click on it from there. So, yeah. Megan, I, when we first started using it, um, the differentiating between work study and non-work study positions, um, there, there was a checkbox for saying if it was, but you weren't allowed to check it. Yes. <laughs> um, and so I, I think that, you know, the workaround is to sort of put that language in the application component, but there's really no way to, there's really no way to, to sort of prefer the, to prefer work study applicants on the platform. Is that, is, is there a better workaround than just, you know, wording the application materials in that way? Um, I guess that, that would be something that like globally I could be being helpful to address. Yeah, um, I agree with you. And I see that as a pretty big pain point for our offices, especially offices that are, you know, only hiring for work study positions. Um, and it really is something that we're working on as an office to get Handshake to allow us to show work study or not work study. It is a feature that Handshake does allow for a lot of institutions but our institution has signed off saying that it's not okay at the purple violation. So, you know, backtracking a little bit on that, we're working on it and we're working on better workarounds for that as well. Okay. At this point, our best practice is to put it into the job description that it's a work study preferred position. Um, and then when you do uh, view applications, um, have students indicate whether or not they are work study. Um, so that's, that's really what our best practice is at this moment. Um, but if you have other ideas too, we're open to hearing them um, and working on that piece with getting the work study approved because Handshake is able to essentially take that data from us and put it onto student profiles, whether or not they have oh, work study. Yeah. Um, and so other institutions have that, but our institution has said no. So we're trying. Work and I'll just interject for a moment. I'll try very hard to not do that much today. Um, what I can share from the seat I said is we will have a we will resolve this by first semester. This is like unacceptable. This has caused too much confusion. Um, it's caused challenges for our students. It's not allowing on-campus employers to screen appropriately. Um, so what I can fairly address is that we will have a solution to this because it's not yeah, um, and I think like, at the end of the day. I just don't want to have awkward conversations with students who in good faith have applied for something that maybe they're an excellent fit for, but budgetarily, we're, our constraints make it very hard unless someone has lost work study while they're still in our employ, like, it, like yeah. then we can work with it, but, but it, it feels, it, I haven't been in this situation often, but I, it really, it's really hard when you've got someone that's like outstanding you yeah. just really been hired over that. Yeah. Time, which is, you know. yeah. And, and a couple things I would add to it is it, it certainly does create confusion for students. Okay. And what students were showing that did have work studies, it was saying they weren't eligible. So unless they proactively reached out to us, they may have been dismissing themselves from a job opportunity. Um, so when I try to say that more direct uh, mm -hmm. piece of like, you're really yeah. a solution to this, because not only is it creating an internal issue, in confusion and frustration for on-campus employers, um, it that's, it's not a fair thing for students. And we know our students, we have a high population of students who have um, work study. And uh, so we're kind of working through the dynamics of respecting that, like sharing physically how much money they get, that is a big piece of it, versus the eligibility. Yes, they have it, no, they don't. There are certainly more complexities beyond that, especially for students who have two jobs on campus, like how do those offices ensure that like they are aware of how much, much funds are yeah. left and how that impacts budget. So I think what we can justly share is like the big problem bucket does sit in big part around 
um, what site? Yes. Yeah, Thank and you. it is very much on our radar. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? Anybody on Zoom have any questions that they would like to ask? I see that there's something in the chat that I. Oh, okay, awesome. All right, so we can move on. I think. All right, so what is Handshake? I'm gonna try to get this screen over here. Nope, Zoom's gonna... Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So what is Handshake? Um, Handshake is the leading career management system um, in the United States for college students. So there's a bunch of different systems out there that does what Handshake does, but not as well as Handshake does it. Um, it was created by college students for college students to really democratize access to employment opportunities. So if we're at Plymouth State University in you know, central New Hampshire, and we are a student and we're looking at opportunities, we're going to see the same opportunities that other students at other universities, say UCLA or even Harvard, that both have handshake, they're going to see the same opportunities as each other. So it's really bringing that equity into the job search for students. Um, and it is a really great way for them to network with employers, um, see different employer profiles, and search for jobs, internships, summer experiences, uh, et cetera. So the features of Handshake include the part-time job, job and internship job board, um, which many of you are already familiar with. I say many, I'm looking at mm -hmm. our folks from Advancement and Alumni. Um, <laughs> You will be uh, soon familiar with that uh, aspect of Handshake uh, as it really supports our on-campus and employment portion. Um, Handshake also has employer events and career fairs. Employers are able to post their own events um, and connect with PSU students at those events virtually. Um, there's a bunch of different ones that are almost every day. So our students have access to the same events like resume reviews from IBM and other big time companies, um, which is pretty awesome. We also do career workshops and events, both in person and virtual through Handshake. Um, it is a really great career and employer exploration tool for our students. Um, it is our main tool for the career development office to communicate with other people. We've probably received an email from Handshake, but actually from me because I've sent them through Handshake often and that's how we communicate with the students as well. And it also houses some guides and resources for our students. So it's a really great system for both students, on-campus employers, um, even faculty to use um, to kind of understand what options are there for students and how to use this tool for them. Um, yeah. And what is unique about Handshake? Um, as I've mentioned before, its mission is to democratize access to employment opportunities, regardless of what university you're going to. If your university has Handshake, you're seeing everything that other universities have. Um, it allows students to get hired, discovered, and connect with employers and other employment opportunities. Um, jobs and internships for all disciplines, majors, career fields, it doesn't, it's not just for one specific thing like business, it's all of it. Um, and it allows students and employers to network with each other. Uh, students are able to search for employers and employers are able to search for students and message them. Um, it's a really great networking tool to utilize. Um, and it's really our one-stop shop and students' one-stop shop for all things employment while at Plymouth State and beyond. They have access to Handshake for up to five years after they've graduated as alumni. So that's a really important tool because, you know, if you're straight out of college and you land a job and it's great for maybe the first two years, but then you want to move on, you want to, you know, check out Handshake. The cool thing about Handshake is that we vet all of the employers and positions that are posted and shown to our students. So we make sure that those positions are good for college students and good for our Plymouth State students. So we make sure that those positions meet our criteria and those employers aren't, that they are legitimate. Um, and Handshake also has a tool to make sure that there's legitimate employers on the website as well. But they have to connect with Plymouth State um, in order to show their positions to our students. Um, and we make sure that they're, they're good. So how does Handshake help us? Um, really the, in a, so many different ways, but one of the main ways, and I'm gonna move 
our Zoom box down a little bit here. One of the main ways is data. You'll see some really compelling data here about on-campus employment that I've been collecting this semester um, through Handshake and through some audits. If you do have a position posted on Handshake, you've probably received an email from me asking about your hiring data for this fall semester. So from that data, I have found that there were 35 open positions in fall 2021. Some two that I know of were positions that were hiring for orientation leaders, which work during the spring <coughs> and summer semester. So maybe 33 would be a more accurate number there. We have hired 60 students for fall 2021. Um, and that those 60 students were hired through the positions on Handshake. So you'll see later, Data from HR shows that 525 student employees were hired in fall 2021 or working in fall 2021, but we can only account for 60 of those students because we don't have everybody on handshake yet. And that's part of why we're doing this today to get you on and make sure you're hiring through our awesome tool. Uh, and we've received 390 applications so far for fall 2021 open positions. That is a huge, huge, huge number. That is pretty incredible that we've had almost 400 applications for the only 35 open positions. That shows that students are really interested in working on campus and that they're you know, looking for a job. Handshake serves as a centralized process for all things employment for students and for you on campus employers. Um, and having this centralized process really shows if we direct students to Handshake to look for a job and our on-campus employers are there, it works out. If we have, you know, more offices than not, not on Handshake, we're trying to get them on there so we can, you know, keep the cycle going instead of having this stop. Students show up on Handshake and they're looking at 35 open positions and they're like, where are all the other open positions? What if I'm not interested in this one? And that's why we're doing this and doing this outreach and, and we understand it's a new tool for, you know, offices to use and it is, you know, take some time to get used to and time to understand and learn. But that's why we're having sessions like this so we can help you figure it out and really make this process as seamless as possible to ensure that students have a central process for finding employment. Um, some shortcomings, um, if you're looking for a one stop for like Kronos or people admin, Handshake unfortunately does not support that. Um, and it doesn't support reaching out to uh, HR and getting a process approved for an on-campus student employment position. So that is still a separate thing. Handshake doesn't cover that. This is more for posting, finding, and recruiting positions, not the back end of getting it, um, getting them hired, doing the time cards, and doing the HR process of getting the position approved in your budget. So that's still going to be separate. That's not included with Handshake. And then we, as we've mentioned earlier about work study, we've mentioned that um, we are unable to import that work study data and that we're trying and hoping, hoping, hoping to have that resolved as soon as possible. Because um, we would like to collect work study data and also to tell this narrative of our students finding work study, but having that like seamless process for students that do have work study to be able to show that they are eligible for the positions that are posted on. Uh, if I may just make one note that I just thought of in sharing this video, Megan, um, is when we look at those 525 students, I think one uh, follow-up step that our office needs to look at is of those 525, I think it's important to get a breakdown by class year, mm -hmm. as well as how many of those are rehired versus rehired for the yeah. semester. Because so that um, 525 is amazing, but I think we um, to do that number adjusting to break it down, looking both by class year and rehire versus new Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was actually just thinking, like in my office, I have a currency where she's never been on handshake. She doesn't need to. You can just simply rehire her. Yeah. So and it's not that that position is open. It is because I have one or two more people. But but she, she didn't need to go through the handshake she never process. Had to go through, right? Yeah. You know, why would she, you know, yeah. So. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's understood in this, but there's definitely a gap of, you know, us having this data on the 60 versus the 525. Right. So definitely want to investigate why that is and how we can better support the offices that aren't there yet to create their handshake account and post their open position. Um, and, you know, students are only here for four years or six or sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Um, and so there's going to be turnaround that's expected in, the, in these positions and how can we support those new hires 
um, and get this process really seamless for students so they know inherently if I'm looking for an on-campus position, I'm just going to go to HG. Um, and there's something to be said about like word of mouth and things like that as well, but um, if the position is posted on Handshake, then we're not relying on word of mouth. We're not relying on students asking questions because um, that's sometimes how a lot of this happens is a student asks the right questions to the right person. Uh, I'm thinking back to university days when we had um, Kristen Wren, I think her name was, and she was talking about knowing a guy at a university. Like if you know the guy, then your work is seamless because they can help you with this. They know the university inside and out and they can get this process started for you. If you don't know a guy, then you're going to run into trouble. So our guy is handshake. Right. Well, and you know, functionally, you have two class, two grade years worth of people who don't know a guy at all. Yeah. You know, they're, they're coming through in a different situation with a different reality than our seniors and their class yep. members. Um, yeah, so that, that, that disparity is much greater yeah. with, with that age. Yeah, it's hard to know a guy when everybody you've met is virtual. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, how can on campus student employment help you as an on campus student employer? Um, Handshake, as I've mentioned, is the one stop shop. So, it's acting for students. We're referring them to Handshake. You're on Handshake. It's good. There's a match. We'll see it there. Um, but students are also able to network with employers and search for opportunities that way as well. And so if you've created an employer account and you reach out to students, they can learn about your position that way or be enticed to apply to your position because you've done the initial reach out. You are able to do that with an employee account, an employer account. Um, and so I asked the question with this information, how are you utilizing that? Are you reaching out to students? Have you thought about that? Is there a way that we can help you with that networking piece? Um, so you are able to reach more students and show your position to more students. So we're all employer. Yes, yes. All of you that are on Handshake have an employer account. So your employer account will be Plymouth State University and then the name of your office. Um, but that, that does serve as an employer account and you're connected within our network of Plymouth State University. Follow up question from there. Yes. So with University of Michigan, for example, yes, um, I could reach out to students for the college program, but on their end, would it seem like it's just coming from University Advancement, so they wouldn't really know if like Leslie or I are reaching out to them? That's a good question. I don't know if the message sent to students comes from like your employer account name or from your name as an individual, because you first create a personal account for you mm -hmm. and then you attach that to an employer account so you'll make an alex account and then mm -hmm. that alex account is then attached to uh advancement mm -hmm. and so i i'm looking into it right now yeah okay, I, I i haven't I, mean, I, how do you, I guess the, this is the part that i've really been struggling with handshake is like i've just been assuming that it's a passive basically like a like a digital bulletin board and that people have to know to come to work to look but like, how would you target outreach? And like, I guess that that's a part that I could definitely use. Um, like that's kind of news to me about yeah. a way to utilize this. Yeah, um, and honestly, I never even thought about on-campus employers using Handshake as a networking tool until recently when I was like, oh, other employers are doing this. Why can't our on-campus employers do this? And it, the answer is they can, and we just haven't talked about it yet. So. I don't want to make this seem like this is like something that should be inherited, like inherited, like with the process. Like this is a revelation that I even just have recently. So, um, and, and I would argue, um, I think if we think about how we thought those like, stage communication systems, like stage one was onboarding, getting sure. people on and like, seeing the value of being in a central place to post opportunities that would traditionally meet the, the needs of. Um, an online digital like bulletin board. Sure. And so where I think we are now is one important that we continue to do that, but then now thinking about how how you actually interact and engage as an employer with Handshake. And then additionally, what is the career development office doing to help promote these opportunities? So it's not just the assumption that students will find their way there, but that we are actually helping them find their way there. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I also know, 
students will get a, they'll receive it as a message on Handshake and they, depending on their notification preferences, will get an email that they've received a message. Students are able to disable notifications or choose what notifications they do receive um, like emails for. Um, and so we encourage students to do that too, to like change their notification, such, uh, notification settings because they'll end up getting a lot of emails from Handshake when they do sign in. Uh, something that I haven't mentioned about Handshake is that all of our students have a Handshake account. They just need to activate it if they haven't done so already. And they sign in with their PSU credentials. So they're not signing in, they're not creating a new account, they're not doing all of that. They're automatically in this our system. And that's how we're able to use this as a communication tool. We're able to email all 6,000 of our students. Um, we are able to filter and like say like, oh, we only want to email like first year students email this Saturday, I think. Um, but regardless of whether or not they've ever logged into Handshake, they're still going to receive that email from Handshake because they're already in the system. Um, students are able to build out their profile on Handshake and put in their interests, their major, all of those things. And that can be a really great tool for you as on-campus employers to filter and email students who have this specific interest listed on their profile. Um, and that's, you know, that requires work on both of our ends. On the career development end, it's us, you know, making sure that students are actually doing that and building out their profile, you know, not just logging in once and then going, oh, okay, I looked at jobs one time and there wasn't what I was looking for, or I found this awesome opportunity. We want them to build out their profile and use this as a tool throughout their time here as a student, but also once they've graduated as well, because um, it's really helpful for them. So, And then uh, a little bit about posting positions. Uh, it shows all students what you are posting out there. You can kind of filter and put requirements or desired qualifications for students. You could do GPA requirement, major requirement, um, or you could just do no requirements at all. Um, but they can filter and browse all open positions. There's like an on-campus student employment button to filter specifically on the job board. Um, but yeah, we're posting where they're looking and that's, that's a good thing for them to be able to find those open positions. So what do you need to create an account? Really just five to 10 minutes of your time, a PSU email address. And then if you're creating a new account for your office, you're going to want to also provide an office description. Um, and that's just a best practice to, to really build out your own profile. So when students are looking at you, they see you as an office, as a legitimate entity, and not just you know a few sentences about like, we're located in Spear 108, we're the career development office. That doesn't really tell students what you're about and why you are an office or how helpful you can be to them. Um, so that's really all you need. This slide is intentionally left blank because it's really that easy. <laughs> all right, so we are going to go into a demo of Handshake. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second. If I can... Ooh. Stop sharing, that's what I would like to do. All righty, bear with me for one moment, please. Click over here, there we go. All right. <laughs> and like my job is
Okay. All right. So to start off your handshake journey, if you have not created an account before, what you're going to do is Plymouth.joinhandshake.com. And it's going to bring you to this login here. This is really for the students. So it's going to say Plymouth State University sign on. This is going to be the student launch tab. If you, I need to put my glasses on, sorry. I'm fogging up over here. All right, if you're an employer and you haven't created an account before, you're going to go over here to no account, sign up here. Sign up here for the, are you an employer? And then you're going to use your work email. Um, this is going to show up as one of the ones that I have gone through. But I'm going to go through, I got Robin's permission, Robin DeRosa, um, to use her information. And then you're just going to create this here. This should be, or it can be, the same um, password that you use for what you normally log in for Plymouth. Um, and that way you can do single sign on and that's just really easy and intuitive for you, but you can create a new password too. Um, I use it for my admin account. Hey, Leslie. Have you used single sign-on for Handshake? Uh, or do you use a separate password? I don't know because I saved my password. You saved it. And then automatically happened. Now, I remember it was a little bit, you know what helped me so much was um, the Corrado system. Callie. Yes, holy cow. I think that's the only reason I was able to do it. Um, and I believe I had to, I don't know if I can just see it. It would be so cool if that were true. Because that's yeah. what I abandoned this summer is when I sent the message and it said, this is these are the steps to set up a handshake account. And they got to a new account, new password. And I'm like, I'm out. It's yeah. tired of two passwords and new accounts. So it looks like it's not like it it's using like my alias. I have a weird situation though because I have my old, like old, old like sys Unix UNHA to do screen. Okay. Email alias transmuted through. So, like, I have two, like, everyone has those two aliases. Right, yeah. So, like, sometimes I need to work that Okay. Um, but I think, um, gosh, I guess I have to log out. I'll have to log out and log back in and see what it does. No, it's okay. So, I think that okay. Leslie's right because I, I, I've always just logged in with single sign on, but that would make sense because I have, okay. I have admin capabilities. And actually, no. No, Leslie, you're right. You can't use single sign-on for an employer because when I made my, I have an employer account for um, academic programs. And when I made that account, I wasn't able to use single sign-on. So backtrack, sorry about that. We are unable to use single sign-on. Uh, we're learning things new today. Um, and I apologize for that little mix up there, but. It was an exciting rumor that you started. Yeah, I started a rumor and then tried to salt it at the same time. All right, so this is going to be Robin's new account. And then it's just going to ask for her information. I don't know her. What is Robin's title? Is she director of the co op? And then it's going to ask for country. You do have to select these things here. Which, uh, which very important, you do not need to select all of them. No, uh, you do not. This is just aligning you with, with um, the field. So this kind of first stage that Megan is going through is mirroring what a, an employer external to Plymouth would do in just setting up their profile that helps us understand your industry, your job function um, on there. So um, that's kind of the key piece yeah. for that. Yeah, you do have to select at least one um, in order to move on. So that's why I selected all of them because we work with all students, but 
Um, you can add your alma mater, um, and this will show students if they have gone to the same university as you, it'll say like, oh, you both went to Plymouth State University, or I believe Robin went to Brown, um, but I don't know her classroom, so we're gonna move on. So this pop-up is going to come up and then you have to um, answer this question here. Are you a third party recruiter? The answer for all of that for you is most likely going to be no. Yes, right. And then you are going to agree to the terms of service and privacy policy. You can also agree to receive marketing messages, including promotions and special offers. I'm going to uncheck that. Request. I would recommend unchecking that. Um, they do send a lot of helpful information, um, but I would say for the terms of the policy, um, you would want to check as employer. It is not necessary to get additional information. Yes. All right. And then you're going to do next confirm email. Oh, hey, Robin. Hey. What's your phone number? Oh, my phone number is 603. Yeah. Who's listening to this? <laughs> 603 726. I'll just do your office number. Um, 603 535. 535. 3147. All right. All right. We've already agreed. And my home phone, my <laughs> office phone rings on my cell phone. That is how this function on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> so first. You don't want to miss anything. No. But. Okay, so Robin showed up at exactly the right time. Welcome, Robin. Um, you will shortly receive an email from Handshake um, that says you just need to do a quick confirmation from them. Um, if you are able to open that, Robin, when you do get it, then we can move on. But I wanted to show um, what kind of happens before you get that email. You can't really, you from here are either going to create a new employer account or join an existing uh, employer account. And because you've used your Plymouth State University. Oh no, how did I manage that? Oh, okay, well, we're having a great day, everybody. Uh, All right. Good cash, Leslie. Uh, no, that's me. Email addresses. Robin, are you already on Handshake? I don't know of, unless like somebody put me in. Are you? I've never, they're all put in here. I don't even know. I don't even know. It's, it's relatively new, right? Like a couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. No. I mean, we do post a lot of jobs. Hannah does. But Hannah does I it. If, I wonder if Hannah like, yeah, added you cool. because because as uh, employers, you are able to add your teammates. Oh. And, and so, have, like, but you would have had to log in. So it's possible it happened. And, it is possible. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I personally. <laughs> I mean, for God's sake, I gave you my email password. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know what's going on in my own account. Yeah. <laughs> I think the moral of the story is you will probably have an easier time signing up for Handshake than then, you're having right now. Yes, right? it is quite an easy but process. I don't, I don't know. Hey, would it be helpful? Um, We could also do your like number letter email. I don't have that because I'm only. Oh. I'm only. You can sign us. me up if you want, Megan. Okay. All right, Jane. What's your email? J L Line. L Weber one B and Weber. Weber. And then you might want to go up. Well, well, we're going to make a different password. Yeah. Yeah, we can Although do. A, you can make any password for this. Yes, I can do a temporary password. How about Jane is helpful. I gave you that password for my whole account. Robin. I changed my whole account. The handshake password one, which I should not say. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you guys come here for professor? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Um, all right, I'll write down this temporary password for you, Jane, and then uh, you can change it whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. And your phone number, please. 603 yes. 535 535 2831. 2831. And you are a director. We'll just check one for you. And then. General studies, maybe it's a generalist. Okay. My new password. All right. And then we're going to check no, agree, marketing materials. All right, Jane. So you will receive a confirmation email and you have your phone. I have to get on email. All righty. And so, as I've mentioned, there's a few different ways to go from here. So now you've created your personal account, but it's not tied to an employer account yet. The next step is once your email has been confirmed for you to join an employer account. Since you've indicated that you're from Plymouth State University, all of the Plymouth State University employer accounts are gonna show up in a little column. So you can either join one of those accounts or you can join or create a new Plymouth State University account. Um, the Writing Center is not on Handshake yet. So this is really great because we're onboarding another one of our offices. Um, and then we can go from there. The biggest, biggest, biggest challenge that we have faced with this is people will try to just join Plymouth State University in general as an employer, whereas we're wanting you to make your individual employer account per program, department, center. Um, so that has been the biggest challenge that we run into is it will see your at clinic.edu email domain and try to get you to join that one and you need to say no to create a new one. Yes. Um, so this will we'll be able to show, show this once Jane confirms her email and refresh to Yes. So as employers, can we see the rest of the schools? Like, if I'm on Handshake, how do I see all of Plymouth's listings? Can I see So Plymouth's listings? as an employer, can you see other employers? Yeah, you cannot. However, if you have, um, if you're in a role where you're working with other students or you're wanting to see other opportunities, we um, can also create you as a student user. I see. So that's okay. beneficial um, for those in particular who are be advising or that are helping sure. connect students to opportunities. You would see that through a student user profile. Got so it. those are the two ways in which we would onboard faculty and staff. Got it. Um, yeah, and you'll see um, how students see. I think it's really beneficial for you as an on-campus employer to have that viewpoint. Um, so you understand how students are viewing your jobs as well um, and how they're able to find positions. So if a student comes to you and asks, I would like to look for employment opportunities, you can, without being blind to the process, show them what that means and how they can look at that. Um, I'm in. No, okay, let me refresh. Okay, so... This is what Leslie was talking about. So this first one here, Plymouth State University, you can request to join this. You should not request to join them. Do not pass go, do not collect $200 for Plymouth State University. But then you'll see down here, we have all of the other offices connected with our school for our on-campus employment opportunities. I think it did join Plymouth State. And then it says Plymouth State University sign on. Go back. So, okay. Yeah, try not to do anything there. So yeah. Right. So on this side here, it's going to show you. So if your office is already on and you're onboarding a new person in your office onto Handshake, then you're going to join one of these already created employer accounts. OK. Um, yes. <laughs> but if you are new to Handshake and your office is not onboarded already, you're going to go to this section down here where it says create new company. And this here is where you can do Plymouth State. 
all of our on-campus employers are going to have this Plymouth State University as the first part. This helps students see who is an on-campus employer and who isn't, um, and also helps our office filter and search to make sure we're messaging the right people. It is just called the Writing Center, correct? That's your full name? Okay. All right, you can add a company logo, you can add a branding image. Jane, you will also be able to edit this stuff later as well. Um, it's going to ask for industry and we'll do higher education website. Ooh. Let's do, can we get this to go away for some reason? Do you all see the Zoom bar? Yeah. But do you, Leslie? Okay. That's not And then website. And then you're going to put 17 High Street, Plymouth, New York, Hampshire. Um, if you don't write out Plymouth, New Hampshire, and just write out Plymouth, the first address that's going to pop up is in the UK. Um, so just make sure you're typing out Plymouth, New Hampshire. Uh, you can add a writing center description. And for right now, that's all I'm going to do for you, Jane. And you can just copy and paste whatever you have already. Uh, and then the company size, how many employees do you have? One to 10. Okay. And then public email. This is not... Um, a required field, but if you want to display that for students looking at your page, a public email for them to email instead of a personal email for you, you can do that as well. And then we hit create new company. All right, but you're not done. You still have to then connect with Plymouth State University. Otherwise, we won't get your request to work with us at the Career Development Office. So we'll just look at Plymouth State. And then you're just going to hit this big plus button here and then next finish. All righty. We are going to. All right, so this is what the handshake homepage looks like here. Uh, you'll see. Now that Jane is logged in, she hasn't been connected with Plymouth State University yet. On our end, we have just received that request in the Career Development Office. And then, as I mentioned before, we do that vetting of all of the employers that connect with us. So we'll view your request and then go through and approve. So if you've ever had that lag. Forget about it, Jane Weber. No, <laughs> just, just for you, Jane, we'll, <laughs> we'll give you the runaround. Um, so from here, this is where you're going to see where you can post a job. Um, for requesting an interview, I see that a lot of our on-campus employers will select that they want to interview on campus. That is for us at the Career Development Office to then schedule an interview and, and hold a room for you to interview on campus. Those are more for our off-campus employers, our local employers who are coming to the university to interview. If you have your own office space and you do not need help from us to interview a student, do not select that, it's, it's not needed. It doesn't do anything on our end if you do select it. If you say interested in interviewing on campus, it's not gonna change how we view it, but it's just, right. But it's for, it's really what's shown to our off-campus employers. So that's where that kind of little gap is there. So from here, I'm gonna show you briefly um, because of time, the company profile. Um, this is where you can add other teammates. Um, so if you go to your company profile, this is what students are able to see. This is kind of going to be like what your public face looks like on Handshake. Um, obviously, this bar over here isn't going to show up. It's going to look a little bit different on the student end. Um, but the same information is going to be there. Um, students are able to set reviews about you. And then if you set up any interviews through our office, that would show up there. But if we want to add other employees, we will hit edit here and then teammates. And then from here, you can copy an invite link. This is like a special invite link that will, whoever clicks on it will automatically be joined to your company, your employer account, or you can add a teammate manually and input all of their information there. Um, they then have to log in and kind of like 
create their own account from there, but you're putting in that information. Um, you are always going to add new members as recruiters. Um, all of the other information here isn't really applicable to you. Um, and some of it comes with Handshake Pro, which you won't have as an on-campus employer. Um, so you will be given the option of recruiter or representative when you're adding a new person. Uh, always check recruiter. That's going to give the um, new person on your team all the access that they need for posting a job, viewing students, and editing your profile. That would be like if I had an assistant director. Yes, if you had an assistant director, they would be able to do that. But I wanted to show you all of that there. And then for jobs, um, you can either post jobs from the homepage here. You can go to post a job or you can go to the job here. If you go to the jobs on this bar on the left here, it's going to show you the information of jobs you have posted or drafts of jobs, um, active, expired, or declined or not posted. Um, so as you build out your handshake and more time has passed, those fields will kind of fill in as time happens as you're posting positions. Yes. Well, and so to that end, like, you know, I was just looking at my job and I'm like, oh, it expired on the 19th. Like, how do I unexpire my job? Like, I still have to fill the position. Like, I hoped I would by this time, but I didn't. So, like, I, in the past, it just duplicated the job and changed the, the expiration date. There's a better way to do that. Yes. And so, I can, yeah. I will actually do that right now with you. So, that is how you create an account. That is how you get to the job posting. Uh, I'm going to, we'll get to that in just a second, but I can post, you can post a job for the writing center. I can help you post a job for the writing center, but here you can go to create a job or from the homepage, you can do that as well. And then there's a lot of fields that you need to fill out here. Um, and then this is the, the question of contention that is this a work study job? And that's always going to be uh, no at this time. And so we communicate otherwise, which will hopefully be soon. Um, but like we mentioned earlier, that that is a work in progress. Um, but this is pretty intuitive to work with. Um, I remember there being one question on there that I felt like I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to fill it out. And that was about eligibility requirements. Work authorization. Yes, work authorization. Like I have no idea what that A means or B indicates what choosing are. And I think I just honestly randomly just chose something. And I was like, I hope if this is wrong, someone comes and tells me. Yes. So I had a very similar. <laughs> yes. I was like, I, because work authorization is for our international students. Um, and so if a job requires work authorization, that means that they need to be authorized to work in the United States. Their visa has to comply with that. Um, and I can't remember where we landed on that, Leslie. Do you? Like, did, are we checking work authorization required or not? So it would be no. Okay. So you're not required to have that because our international students can work on campus up to 20 hours a week. Okay. So their visa status does not impact if they can get an off-campus job. Cool. It impacts getting jobs off-campus, but they all international students can work on. For the 20 hours. And then unlimited hours during breaks. So as yeah, that's another thing. I wonder if they off can hire for more than 20 hours. Is that a limit? There is no institutional limit. Um, we would say no more than 15, I'd say would be the high um for one position i know in previous institutions 20 hours was the cap um so it really depends on what your office's needs are and what you're approved for from hr for your budget because if they're working 20 hours does that mean you're you have them for less weeks if you've budgeted for 10 hours a week or something along those lines so Minimally, and does that maybe mean also across multiple positions? Like we've definitely yes. students working ten hours, but they also have other yeah. on-campus jobs. So, mm -hmm. Multiple, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and it doesn't seem that Plymouth has any restriction on how many jobs you can have or how many hours you can work because we've asked that question to HR before and we haven't received like a solid yes or no. Um, but I mean, students 
really shouldn't be working full-time jobs while they're, unless they absolutely need to, but is that going to be an on-campus full-time job? No, we're unable to really support those with our budgets. So, um, so yeah. Megan, I'm going to be disappearing in three minutes. Yes, yes. So I wanted to go through job postings, but for time, I want to open it up for questions. I have a job posting like template and best practice guide that I'd like to share with all of you. Um, and I can do that via email. But uh, with the three minutes that we have left, what questions, what more can I help you with? Like, is, would another session be helpful about job postings, about more things on Handshake? What didn't I cover that you were worried about? And maybe the next section could just be troubleshooting. Or maybe yeah. Something like that. And people yeah, can find out if they had a few solutions. Yeah. And I would just like to add, and Megan and I were talking about this in advance to this session, like Handshake is, is one component of how we're supporting on-campus student employment. Um, we know we have received feedback from colleagues that people are having challenges hiring students. So if you're able to share those now, share what challenges that you're facing, we are hearing that students aren't applying for certain positions. We're hearing that students aren't responding to interview requests. So we're trying to see where yes. that's happening yeah. um, so we can respond because this is genuinely one component in the big area that we have been talking through and building information out is how to help students become on campus job ready. So is it sending them through a prep session during their student orientation? Is it us building a semester long um, training and education? So this is a huge piece of where I envision Megan's role going. Once we get people on Handshake, understand how to use Handshake, see the value, and that allows us to shift our kind of time allocation for some of those more proactive yeah. measures. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I also wanted to mention that um, in 2019, uh, Leslie, the Career Development Office, uh, facilitated a, a survey on on-campus student employment. And that was a major issue that we were seeing in that in those survey results were students not responding to things or students not being career ready or not being able to you know, write a professional email or correspond or do those kinds of things. And, we see that, we hear that, we're working on it. Um, yeah, any other questions? I see that uh, there's been a request for the guide. Absolutely, we can send that to you. Um, I need to make like one minor edit, I think. I was looking at it today, I was like, oh, there's a big one. But any other questions? That was a really great start, thank you. Yeah, of course. I super, super appreciate everybody being here. Thank you to everybody who joined us on Zoom. Um, and anybody who's going to watch this recording, um, Handshake is a labor of love. I eat, breathe, sleep, think Handshake as its own language. And I understand that, um, you know, for some people, this is a new scary software to use and I'm here to help. And if you do need help, if you do have an issue, um, I am more than happy to set up an individual Zoom meeting or in-person meeting for us to go over Handshake together um, because, you know, Three months ago before I was on Handshake, I didn't know all this, or I guess it was longer than three months, more like five months ago now. You know, I, I didn't understand all this stuff either. And it was a learning process for me, but now I'm like, this is my second language. Scared stuff just yeah, overwhelmed. Can you come next door when you before you leave and tell me my password? Oh yes, yes, I can. <laughs> all right, thank you everybody. And if you do have questions, you can email me as well. Yes.